Martin Fletcher spent 40 years working as a foreign correspondent, and for most of that time, he was a reporter for NBC News based in Tel Aviv, Israel. He traveled hundreds of thousands of miles on the job, covering elections, wars, natural disasters, stories large and small in the Middle East, Europe, Africa, and beyond. Now retired, Martin Fletcher recently came to Maine to give a talk in Freeport about his latest book, Teachers, The Ones I Can't Forget. It tells the stories of inspiring people he met on the worst days of their lives and the lessons they taught him. Oddly enough, Martin Fletcher's long career in journalism wasn't something he planned and came about almost by accident. I actually wanted someone to pay for my travel around the world. And I, I applied for British Airways, all kinds of travel company. <laughs> <laughs> and the only job I got was at a television organization. And they did pay for me to travel around the world for 40 years. So I achieved my goal. But my goal did change through time, you know. I mean, it, it was pretty facetious in the beginning, but I loved what I did. What was your first job in either broadcasting or journalism? Where did you get your foot in the door? Belgian television. I started as a translator. <laughs> that was my first ever job. And then I, then I went to Viz News in London. Remember Viz News? They're in today's Reuters TV as, as a writer. Then I went to the BBC as a writer. Then I joined NBC as a cameraman. Eventually, Martin Fletcher became a reporter. And in 1982, he started working as NBC News' correspondent in Tel Aviv, Israel. Just as we arrived, about a minute ago, there was a bombing here, an Israeli plane bombed a Palestinian police station. Let's go see what happened. It was supposed to be a three-year assignment in Israel. It lasted for 28. It was a fantastic place to be for a very long time because it was so interesting. And America at that time, really, Israel was like a domestic story for the United States. Whatever happened in Israel, you got on the air. And I saw my role as being the guy who would tell the story fairly, accurately, responsibly, and, I was, and NBC, I guess, agreed because the three years became 28. <laughs> Fletcher covered the entire Middle East, a region rife with conflict. With the death toll mounting, the call everywhere here on the West Bank is to protect the Palestinian refugee camps and for revenge. The work was endlessly interesting and extraordinarily demanding. First of all, the pace is frenetic. So every day is a different story in a different country, very often. Marlon Fletcher, NBC News, the Vatican. Tripoli, Kabul, Skopje, Dese, Ethiopia. He can't really explain why, but Martin Fletcher was able to report on violence and bloodshed and natural disasters without being deeply scarred by all the human suffering he witnessed. Being trying to be funny here, but actually wherever I came back from, from whatever disaster I was covering, I came home to a wife who handed me a baby at the door and said, oh, you're home, your turn. And <laughs> that's very grounding and very real. So I think raising a family at the same time as covering terrible events all around the world was an advantage and a disadvantage. I mean, I wasn't at home a lot of the time, so it's difficult for my wife. Um, but coming home to a, to a loving family w was a big deal for me. You know? I mean, most of my friends, everybody I knew, was, first of all, every foreign correspondent I know is divorced. I'm not divorced. They're all drinking, and a lot of them take, I don't do any of that stuff. Don't drink, don't dr no drugs, nothing, never did do. No tattoos. <laughs> you know, just the person I am, I guess. I don't know, I'm not sure how, why I was untouched. I feel today that I do have some PTSD, there's no doubt about that. And I think it's important to acknowledge it. In the busiest years, how many thousands of miles would you travel in 52 weeks? Well, I was on the road about four to five months a year probably on average. And I worked out that means I actually spent about 16 years in hotel rooms. <laughs> that's, an excuse me, that's an incredible way to look at it. I, mean, I, spent, I spent a decade and a half living in hotel rooms. It's crazy. And not just in the Middle East, but Europe, Asia, Africa. Yeah, mostly Middle East, Europe, and Africa was mostly where I went. So let's see what this feels like. There you go. <laughs> oh man. Do you miss the work? Because it's it's a job for people who are kind of adrenaline junkies. And when you step away, I would think it would not be easy. Has it been hard? Yes and no. I mean, when, when, when the Russians invaded Ukraine, like what, a year ago now, more or less, I got loads of calls from people saying, are you going to Ukraine? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, thank you. But I would have normally been there in a flash. Um, 
So I know I, I, it's, it's very dangerous. And at my age, you know, it's difficult too. You know, you don't get much sleep. And there's, you, often there's no food. And in Sarajevo, I spent about six months in Sarajevo during the siege. Every time there was water, you'd fill up the bath and make sure you had some water for the next week. You know about the exercise that is often assigned to young journalism students, write your own obituary. How would you start your obituary? What would, I would be the opening line or two? I would start my obituary in exactly the way I did start my obituary. I asked AI to write my obituary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you weasel! <laughs> I did. I thought. I thought after, what are they called? Chat GB. What's it called? Chat GBT. Ch I, so I said. I, said I asked Chat GBT to write my obituary, and it was pretty good. But there's another Martin Fletcher who works for the London Times, and they got us mixed up a bit. And I was, I was rather upset. It didn't use the word brilliant even once. So it's a failure, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. But how right. I would start my obituary. I'm going to be a stern taskmaster and make you write it. I'm going to hand you a pen and a piece of paper so that I know you're the one who's actually writing it. What, how would it start? He tried his best. It's a good way to begin mm -hmm. <laughs> with just the pencil and paper. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fascinating guy. You were there for that yes. interview. And uh, he's one of those people you could just listen to truly all afternoon. He's so captivating and he's so calm, cool, and collected. You yeah. just want to hear more from him. Yeah.